Welcome back everybody to the English legal system. In this video what we're going to do is talk about the rule of law as a basic and fundamental concept when it comes to examining the ways in which law operates, specifically when within the jurisdictional system of England and Wales. Now, I will preface this video by making it very clear that we're going to be talking about the rule of law actually twice <laughs> across two different subjects uh, over the next few days and weeks. We're going to talk about the rule of law within the context of the English legal system in this lesson and in the next lesson. And we're also going to be talking about the rule of law as a concept, which is a foundational constitutional theory when we examine public law in more detail in the future as well. So you might see a bit of a crossover in terms of the kind of content that is examined here. And that's perfectly fine. Um, there are very uh, varying different instances where you will see crossover in terms of the types of things that you study. Uh, but that's just a, a note to, uh, to, to you before we look at the rule of law in two different subjects. OK, so we're essentially diving a little bit into legal theory in this lesson, uh, looking at some of the foundational concepts of specifically the English legal system. Uh, and the, the idea of the rule of law is arguably by, by some metrics and on some standards, uh, according to some individuals, uh, the, the concept of the rule of law is the most foundational principle of the, uh, of the English legal system and potentially the, the, the constitutional system that exists within England and Wales and within the United Kingdom. Now, we're going to take a brief introduction to the concept of the rule of law in this lesson. Uh, we're also going to be reticent to the fact that, as I've mentioned, we're going to be studying and covering the subject of the rule of law in a little bit more detail when we examine how the rule of law fits into and is informed as one of the foundational principles of the UK constitution. So the rule of law is, as a basic idea, is a particularly theoretical aspect of the English legal system. Uh, and it is one that is quite difficult to conceptualize, despite the fact that the conceptual principle in and of itself is of great importance to those who are studying the English legal system and who are studying the constitutional frameworks of the United Kingdom. And so ultimately, because it is difficult and incredibly theoretical, it means that the definition of the rule of law as a basic principle within the United Kingdom or specifically within England and Wales is difficult to define. We can't have a very specific and niche definition of the rule of law. Uh, there have not been um, too many attempts to try and just define the rule of law as a single sentence, for example. Uh, and for the most part, jurisprudential theorists, constitutional theorists, and scholars of the English legal system operate on the basis of trying to characterize the rule of law as a system of set of principles, rather than necessarily coming to a codified definition. So we'll talk about the most substantive account of the rule of law, at least within the United Kingdom. Um, this is the rule of law as described by uh, one of the constitutional theorists, A.B. Dicey, in the next lesson. Uh, but for this point, let's have a look at some of the general viewpoints which are said to encompass this idea of the rule of law. And we can really broadly understand the rule of law as encapsulating the view that all people are both subjected to the law and that they are accountable to the law as well and that the law in this regard ought to be uh, fair and properly enforced. Now you may note that this is a substantive principle of law itself and some jurisprudential theorists may come to the conclusion of the fact that if there is not an adherence to the basic principles of the rule of law, then the quote-unquote law in question ceases to become law. It becomes a question of ontology, about what law actually is. And some argue that law doesn't exist where the rule of law doesn't exist. So if you have a law that is unfairly applied and that is discriminatory, for example, then this is an inherent and substantial violation of the rule of law. However, you could also just come to the perspective that the rule of law is a general guideline for how people and how states ought to operate uh, their legal systems. And we have this as this idea of equality. If you, if you note here that we see that the rule of law is something which ought to be fairly and properly enforced. It ought to be subjected and accountable to everybody. And so from this perspective, particular perspective, we can come to the conclusion that the rule of law encapsulates a number of different principles. Now, theorists and scholars from Dicey to, to, to Joseph Raz have all come up with ideas relating to uh, what are the substantive principles of the rule of law. But 
in terms of a general consensus, which is outlined by pretty much everybody in terms of what the rule of law encompasses, we come to the following conclusions, that the rule of law generally requires that there be punishment and sanction which is done in accordance with law and not done on some arbitrary basis. So the punishment and sanction of an individual by the state should not be done on the basis of some kind of arbitrary rule or the whims of a particular leader within government. It should be done with accordance to the due process of law and the application of legal principles. Law represents equality. It means that it is applied to everybody equally and it is applied to everybody um, regardless of what position you are in within the particular legal system. This encapsulates the view that nobody is above the law. There is not an individual in uh, England and Wales who uh, the law does not apply to them. It applies to everybody equally um, so, so long as, of course, you operate within the, within the jurisdiction by which that law is applicable. So, for example, company law doesn't apply to everybody because not everybody owns or operates a company. But everybody who does own and operate a company um, has the application of company law applied to them in an equal manner. So that's the kind of way in which we can understand um, the kind of law as it applies to individuals. There has to be fairness and, and clarity of law. The law shouldn't represent unfair, unjust concepts. It should be something which is fairly applied and something which is representative of fairness. And this is really where we get to a debate that was had and the history of, of, of law and the common law specifically developing uh, into principles with the Court of Chancery and principles of equity. Because it is considered in some cases, at least very early on in the development of the common law, that the correct application of the common law, where the common law is applied correctly, may result in unfair or unjust outcomes. And so what the, uh, the, the idea and the development of equity uh, entails and the establishment of the Court of Chancery entailed was this idea that equity could maybe step in to rectify and to balance out some of the uh, unfair, potentially unjust outcomes of the common law, which were applied correctly where the law was actually applied correctly but was seen to be unfair in some kind of way and some uh, and to be unjust in some kind of way um, and of course we see now that there is a there is a fusion of the sort of law and equity jurisdictions with the judicature acts and then we now have equitable principles that are sort of imbued within lots of the different areas of the english legal system we're going to talk about equity and trust for example we'll talk about the imp imposition of equity within land law etc 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 there's also the clarity of law there's one idea here that law must be clear for those to understand it if the law is convoluted and complicated such that the an ordinary individual cannot understand what you are supposed to do then this seems to be a violation of the rule of law if you cannot understand what you're supposed to do then then how can you be expected to follow the law and therefore punished if you do not tying into the second point here this idea that nobody is above the law again is representative of this idea that the law represents equality everybody the law applies to everybody in an equal manner there is no individual to which the law does not apply taking this further therefore when we look at the principles of the rule of law we have to think about how the rule of law is a principle which permeates the process of law making not just the application of legal principles in the houses of parliament for example there is the passage of legislation in accordance with the principles of the rule of law or supposedly there is the ha the passage of legislation in accordance with the principles of the rule of law so for example uh, most new laws are proposed and are the which are proposed which are bills within within parliament are done so through the house of commons by the democratically elected government and this is seen as something of a political mandate that the government has they are elected by the people they maintain a majority within the house of commons they maintain a majority uh, in terms of seats within parliament and so as a result of that, it suggests that the wills of the people collectively support the government in their decisions which are which are made. And so as a result of which, 
the idea that the the government in the House of Commons democratically proposing new bills is considered to be something of a of a rule of law principle in accordance with the principles of the rule of law. It enshrines some of the democratic principles of the rule of law, the idea that there is an inherent link between the rule of law and basic principles of democracy. The party with the largest majority in the House of Commons therefore has the mandate to propose the creation of new legislation. Now, we also have the fact that the House of Commons is significantly more powerful than the unelected House of Lords. It would probably be seen as something of a violation of or contravention of the rule of law if the House of Lords was significantly more powerful than the House of Commons, given the fact that the Lords are unelected. They are appointed and they are often quite aristocratic, often upper class positions which are, which are granted. So the fact that the House of Commons significantly has more power, both legal power as well as power deriving out of constitutional convention, this suggests, therefore, that there is a certain imbuing of the rule of law within the process of democratic lawmaking as well.